Good. Good morning. My name is Jeremy Ron, the Public Information Officer on Incident Management Team 2 uh, here presently at the LNU Lightning Complex. Um, as we've mentioned before, uh, the last few days, I want to thank everybody for uh, viewing this. Uh, just as a reminder, we want to make sure we're reaching our entire audience. So if we can make sure that our interpreter is included in your shots, we really would appreciate that. Just a couple things uh, statewide, just to bring everybody up to where we're looking at is one of the things within our organization throughout California, we, we have a lot of partnership and partnerships and specifically with the California National Guard, we have over 1,800 service members that are part of incidents statewide as well as some specifically that the incident commander will reference that are coming to help us here at the LNU complex. As far as out of state resources, we have 91 fire engines assigned to incidents from Arizona, Idaho, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Oregon, Utah, Washington, and Montana. And that's part of the 375 engines that were requested. One thing I want to touch on real briefly this morning is driving. As we start to repopulate areas, as well as curiosity uh, is regarding some of the wildfires, is we really want to encourage people to stay out of the area. We have a lot of equipment that's driving in a lot of these narrow roads uh, throughout the entire state. It's a very similar uh, component. So please stay out of the area of a wildfire um, so we can make sure it's safe for everybody uh, that's responding into it. Again, I just wanted to mention our 24-hour information number is 707-967-4207. And now for an operational update, I'd like to invite up Chief Chris Waters. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Going to give an operational update for the LNU Lightning Complex. I'm uh, Chris Waters, Operations Section Chief. Start out here in the West Zone. The Myers Fire, pretty well tied up. Got Highway 1 open back up and repopulation efforts underway. Walbridge Fire. Walbridge Fire, fire offers some significant challenges. Heavy fuels, steep and broken terrain, uh, and very difficult terrain to work in. Also, uh, a lot of homes and a lot of infrastructure we have to work around. We continue to make good progress in tying together vineyards, people's backyards, uh, strategic points, uh, geography, and still working to try and tie a lot of line together to put some <clears throat> put some line around this whole fire, and then also doing some firing operations um, to help secure some of those lines. Moving over to the east zone, I'm going to start up here um, at the at the point where Cash Creek enters Cape Hay Valley on the north down to Winters. This area is under mop up and control. We have resources that are gathering up some of the materials and bringing back the trash and other things that we have from the fire suppression operations. Winters to Vacaville, we continue to do calls for service and to help support repopulation efforts in the area in Pleasant Valley Road and trying to get folks back into that area so they can start to recover. Down in Fairfield North to about um, Highway 128, uh, repopulation efforts continue. And we also continue to do safety operations to allow for the safe re-entry of the population in those locations. From 128 up to the area above Calistoga and Angwin, uh, 24 to 48 hours. Uh, this whole next couple of days, we're going to be reviewing those areas for repopulation and starting to make efforts to get folks in the areas unimpacted by fire, and then also going in and working in areas to safe areas up to get folks that are within the impacted area of the fire. Our top priority today on the incident is up here in the area just south of Middletown and trying to get a significant air show pushed into here. Dozers, hand crews, engines, the last real significant piece of firing and line construction we have left to do is right here on this part of the fire. The highest priority on the fire and today's operation is going to be primarily focused on making that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, now I'd like to invite up our law enforcement partners, uh, Sheriff Mark Essick and Sheriff John Robertson. Good morning. My name is Mark Essick. I'm the Sheriff of Sonoma County. I'm here today with my colleagues, Sheriff John Robertson from Napa County and Captain John Blenko from the Napa CHP Command. We are working together closely as partners in law enforcement, and we continue to work closely with CAL FIRE as partners to hold evacuation zones 
and to work on repopulation and reentry on areas that have been determined to be safe. We are seeing an increase in the number of cars that are showing up at road closures and checkpoints. We understand that many people are anxious to get back home and to check their property, and many are also growing weary of the uh, long evacuation uh, periods that we're going through right now. It's important uh, to use the resources in your county, which would be official government uh, resources in Sonoma County, that's socoemergency.org, or uh, other resources in your county for finding information about the fire and evacuations. They are readily available. Uh, what is going on right now behind the scenes is we have utility companies, public works crews, and others in uh, evacuation zones that are affecting repairs to make the area safe for you to get back home. I can assure you they are working tirelessly behind the scenes, uh, and that includes CAL FIRE, working to clear roads and make the area safe, those utility companies and public works folks in there as well. As always, um, your law enforcement partners will be in areas that are either under evacuation or under evacuation warning. Those law enforcement partners are there to answer your questions, to guide you to safety, and ensure that you are um, well informed. So please uh, talk to our deputies and police officers in the field. They will give you information and, and uh, support you any way they can. Uh, thank you for your continued cooperation and patience as we work, work through evacuations and in transition into repopulation and reentry. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Now I'd like to invite up, invite up our unit chief, Chief Jones. Good morning, and thank you for turning in this morning. This fire remains very dynamic. As you received the briefing this morning, um, a lot of things are happening in those 350 plus thousand acres covering almost six counties. We're right on the edge of Calusa. There's a lot of work that's being done and I know that all of you are growing uh, concerned about the time that it takes and um, can you get back into your home and when will the smoke clear? I assure you that every resource available to us is working tirelessly and as hard as they can to ensure your safety and getting you home as quickly as possible. I know that I've said this before, um, but uh, I think it's important to realize as you um, are have concerns about getting in quickly, how much is happening in California. So we are the third largest fire in state's recorded history. Only two years ago, the largest recorded fire was 459,000 acres. It covered Mendocino, Lake County, and Calusa County. So fast forward two years, we're number two behind Santa Clara complex, just to our south. All of the resources in the state of California are working incredibly hard. We've gotten so much support from outside of the area, outside of the state. You heard the states that are here to help us. I just wanna say thank you to everyone, including those that are supporting our evacuees, our communities to provide them help um, for getting back into their homes. Unfortunately, homes were destroyed in this fire and folks are gonna need help with, with getting back on their feet. So I wanna thank you, all of those folks, not just the cooperators behind me, but everybody listening for all of their help to get us there. I really hope that you continue uh, to be alert and aware uh, I asked, and I'm gonna say it again, readyforwildfire.org is a great place for you to find information on how to be prepared. Additionally, there's a lot of news media out there, and the most current information is coming from this team, from the county that you live in, and those organizations. Some Twitter feeds that are out there, I'm asking you to please tune in to the a legitimate official um, information so that you can have the most up-to-date. I really appreciate your patience and we look forward to getting you back home as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite up our incident commander, Chief Cavanaugh, and uh, immediately following uh, Chief Cavanaugh's comments, we'll take a, a few questions through the, through the Chief. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Good morning, and thank you for joining us once again here for an update on the LNU Lightning Complex. 
As we sit today, the fire, the entire complex, once again, acres wise, is sitting at 357,046 acres. The Hennessy fire over here in the east zone is roughly 299,763 acres at 33% containment. The west zone over in Sonoma County with the Walbridge fire is at 54,923 acres at 19% contained, and the Myers fire is still at uh, 2,360 acres and 97% containment. We're hoping to, that'll be moving forward. We're feeling really good as we keep saying every day about the Myers fires as, uh, as we move forward. Uh, as far as personnel engines today, uh, engines for the entire complex that we have is 293 engines, uh, 66 water tenders, 11 helicopters, 18 hand crews, 56 dozers. For a total personnel of 2,207 personnel. Uh, to give a little context to this, the size, and geographic area that we have, if you if you take that per person that is assigned, that's uh, roughly 162 acres per person uh, that is on this incident. Now, that's just not everybody on the fire line. That's actually count, and counting me with all the staff that we have here at the base camp. So uh, just a little bit of perspective. It is a very large incident with a lot of ground that has to be covered by the folks out on, out on, the, uh, out on, the, on the fire lines. As you just heard with Chief Waters, today is a next couple of days is very critical on the fire ground operations that we have, especially with the weather that is somewhat stable with the southwest winds. Temperatures are, are the same for the next few days through the weekend with our humidities. We have a couple of key areas that uh, we're focusing in on today and tomorrow. Um, with that, uh, if we can get those areas contained and get good get fire lines around them, get good burn operations to take place, we're going to start feeling a lot more optimistic about uh, what we have on, in, in front of us and moving forward. I did yesterday take a flight around the Wallbridge fire in, over there yesterday afternoon after we were able to get up in the air from aircraft. That's I've been talking about that the last couple of days. Um, we haven't been able to get the aircraft up until the late afternoon, and so that was the same thing as yesterday. So I got a flight around that fire. Uh, make no mistake, there is a lot of work that has to be done over on the Wallbridge Fire. There's a very difficult country over there. There's no fire history over there. We have different fuels that um, go around the entire different uh, fire from the east side of the fire to the west side to the to the north side of that incident and also to the south. So very difficult. But what I can tell you is there is a good plan in place. The folks over there are working tirelessly every day. Uh, in that section, on, on all the sections of the, the Wallbridge fire. Uh, so th so those are some critical pieces that we do have, have moving forward. Uh, we do have the cooperation with the weather right now, which is important for us to take advantage of that. We have to be op optimistic or opportunist when it comes to the weather. Also for repopulation, uh, yesterday we were fortunate to be able to repopulate multiple areas on both zones of the entire complex. Uh, that has been a priority of ours. With today, as we move forward, and we still have those plans in place over the next 24, 48, 72 hours to start trying to do more, uh, more repopulation. Um, but we have to be very diligent, and we have to make sure that the lines are in a good, um, that we can get people back in their homes safely. Uh, that's same down within Solano County as we're working down there. There's areas over our next 72-hour plan to, to start getting people back in their homes after all the cooperation, all the, the utility companies, the, you know, make sure the, uh, um, the fire is safe to get people back in their home. So that has taken place, and it's, it continues to be a, an utmost priority for all of us. Coming in today, as I talked about yesterday, we do have approximately 250 uh, California National Guard service members that are coming into the incident today, hopefully this afternoon. Uh, those service members are going to be used for, we, they've been trained for fire line. Um, that is their, that's their mission is to be used out on the fire lines. That's with all the tools that we use, just like a hand crew that we use. That is, I want to make sure that I'm very clear about what their, their purpose is here. Um, we're thankful to have them in those areas where we can there's different types of crews that we can use on the fire line and those crews coming in will free up some of our what we call type one crews to be able to use them in other areas around the entire complex where there's a little more uh, strategic and uh, technical uh, fire lines that need to be put in so we're happy to have those crews coming in today overall um, I appreciate everybody turning in. It's very important, as we've been talking about, to have the, the correct information out there. Uh, we're in six counties that we're working in, and there's just a very large, complex incident with a lot of information uh, and lots of people that are evacuated their homes. And we want to make sure we're getting that information out there to you. With that, like I said, we're, we're feeling optimistic about where we're going, and we have to take advantage of the, the, the few situations with the weather we have now. 
Uh, with that, I would like to ask if there's any questions. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I was just hoping you could give an update on the statewide numbers, uh, acres burned, those kind of things across the entire state. You know, right off the top of my head, I know Chief Jones, do you have any numbers off the top? I'm not sure if we do. I'm sorry. I think we have just one second. Yes, I can. Let me, uh, let me look. I had that up here. Uh, let's see. So far, right now, combined year to date, as of uh, yesterday, we've had uh, 7,099 fires for a total of 1,603 acres and or one, uh, 1. 1.6 million acres um, as of yesterday. I think Chief Jones has talked about that in the past. Yesterday at this time, I think we had a total combined acres of 55,000. So you can see the dramatic increase here in just the, the last, really, you know, it's been the last six weeks here in the state that where fire season really kicked off. And back to your question, I, you know, I've talked about this. We were only in the third week of August. And as we know, we move in September, October. We keep talking about it here, the fire history here from the Kincaid fire last year was in October. The fires from the Atlas and the Tubbs in 2017 in these areas were, you know, in, in the October area. Um, so I ask everybody, you know, we are a long ways from fire season being over. And the strain and the pull on the resources throughout the entire state, it's really good to see these, these folks coming from out of state to help because we do have a long fire season. And you never know when it's going to end. Just a few years ago, we were down in Southern California with five of the six Cal Fire teams out of the six uh, clearing in December. And so um, those are things we have to look at. It's all about, you know, resting our folks because you never know, know how long it's going to take. Is there any other questions? Okay, thank you very much for joining us.